Welcome to SC24, the supercomputing conference here in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Dave Nicholson with 65 on the road. And if you were to boil down what supercomputing is all about, SC24, high performance computing, AI, it all comes down first and foremost to the data that needs to be stored and processed, that generates heat, that heat is generated because of massive power consumption. It all needs to be cooled. It's all kind of like plumbing, but we're gonna make it sound a little more technical than that. I have two gentlemen who are very, very deep into all of this movement of data, cooling of data. Uh, Praveen, how are you? We're doing very good, David. Good to very see nice you from Micron you. and from Lenovo. Patrick, welcome, gentlemen. Excellent, good to see so you let's let, Yeah, good, good, good to have both of you here. I wanna start with memory. What is Micron doing? What's the latest and greatest when it comes to the kind of AI workloads and things that you're seeing out there and what's Micron doing to address them? Yeah, so maybe I'll start with the context of why we are here also Absolutely. in the context of supercompute, you know. We are here on the exhibit floor. It's such a great environment to be in. Uh, we were here last year and we walked away with some very key takeaways. You know, what the industry is doing to innovate and provide new ways of solving compute challenges uh, in the semiconductor industry. So even yesterday, I was talking to a bunch of university students, uh, incredible ecosystem that comes to supercompute every year and amazing ideas in terms of how do we advance technology and innovations, right? Uh, also, I think in the last 24 to 48 hours, several announcements about you know, new solutions to solve compute challenges. But what I find interesting in all of these is deeply embedded in all these uh, storylines is the very strong coupling between compute and memory, right? And we gravitate towards that and the way we think about it in Micron is memory-centric computing, right? What does that mean for the world and how do we operate in a memory-centric computing world? Um, but operating in that world also requires us to have a very close collaboration with people who understand systems and who can deliver solutions, which is where our engagement with Lenovo comes in, right? An incredible partnership and thank you, Patrick, for uh, being with us today to go deliver the solutions. So if you think about in that background, the kind of things that Micron is working on to, for AI and high performance computing is really on three vectors. It's basically bandwidth and performance. How do we deliver more and more of that? Uh, it's capacity. How do we provide more content per millimeter square? Right? And the third thing is, you touched upon it, power efficiency. It's so important as we scale performance over the next five to 10 years, you've got to do it in a power efficient manner. Right? So these are the three vectors that we use to go design our memory solutions. And one of the solutions that we are working very closely with Lenovo is called the Multiplex Rank DIMM, which is an MR DIMM, which today, uh, compared to conventional memory solutions, it provides a 40% improved bandwidth in a main memory uh, solution, which is incredible, right? This usually, this takes gen over gen, two to three years for you to deliver that performance improvement. And this, uh, this innovation allows us to go deliver that. And uh, we are very closely uh, working with Lenovo to make sure this solves problems for the AI and HPC industry. I do wanna say that, you know, from a Lenovo perspective, we, we look at it starting from that customer centric uh, you know viewpoint and when we have to look at workloads such as HVC that are really you know going to have some memory you know optimization that especially around the bandwidth that is so critical the data sets and the, and the memory access is really important especially in that HVC environment and we've seen trends in the industry before where we move from DDR4 to DDR5 we've seen some increases in memory channels that are available and this is certainly critical to as we build out the systems but the latest technology available from Micron is really important because within that same physical envelope, meaning a dim socket, we can now increase, as Praveen has said, more 40% higher bandwidth. For us, power is going to come along with that performance and power translates to heat. That was your executive summary. <laughs> For <laughs> Lenovo systems, we're on our sixth generation of warm water cooling known as our Neptune technology. That's really critical because we can provide water directly to those dims in a lot of our systems now that actually can capture that heat and provide true efficiency 
and total cost of ownership benefits the customers, that's back to that customer centric. So not only do they get the benefits of the workload, they get all the other TCO benefits with Lenovo and Micron pairing here with the MRDIM technology. Praveen, you touched on just, just a little bit, um, this idea of doing things that you can to decrease the amount of power that's consumed, therefore decreasing the amount of heat that has to be dissipated by friends at Lenovo. What are, what are some of the technologies that go into that? And, and I, have a, I have a specific question. To the extent that you can leverage uh, high bandwidth memory, does that in and of itself decrease the amount of power consumed because you're not having to move data around in, type, in the system as much, or do I have that wrong? Yeah, I think that's a good way to think about it, right? In terms of one of the trends in the industry is the closer you move memory to compute, the less distance you need to move data and that naturally reduces the amount of energy you spend, right? Uh, but we also, I think the context to think about uh, there is power and there is efficient use of power, right? So you've got to work on both, right? You want to go reduce your consumption, but then whatever you consume, do you use that efficiently? So those are the two areas we work on from a memory subsystem perspective, right? And from high bandwidth memory, one of the innovations we've worked on is our high bandwidth memory consumes about 30% less power intrinsically compared to other products out there in the HBM space. And that is a value proposition. Now, once you do that, you also want to go use that efficiently, right? The higher performance allows you to go complete tasks quickly. One of the concepts that with the help of Lenovo who really latched onto this is we're thinking about task energy in terms of how much energy do you spend to complete a task, right? If I can walk from here to the end of this hall and do that spending less energy, then maybe I can walk one more hall, right? And how do I do that better? And trying to do that as a focus. And again, the cooling solutions that we are working with Lenovo and their innovations work help really manage that a lot because for the same power dissipation, you manage your thermals, things are cooler, you're able to improve your performance. And, and of course, when you talk about reducing the amount of power consumed per task, you're talking about all sorts of green things, not the least of which is the green money that's saved. Right, that's exactly. On, on, on power. Uh, talk about the differences between, or the limits of air cooling in an environment like this compared to what you're doing with direct liquid cooling technology. And then I've, I've got a specific question um, I, I'm, I'm curious about racks today. How much power are we potentially pumping into a single 42U rack in a data center today? Yeah, great question. What, is, what does that look so, like? So let me take the first part yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, we're seeing, you know, water is just simply a more efficient conductor of heat, right? That's just when you compare that to air. So when you look at the ability to extract the heat off of, um, you know, the the element that's creating the performance, right? In this case, MR dims, but, but we also see that across the system, right? CPUs, accelerators, everything else is generating heat, right? So we can extract, we, we can show, you know, tangible benefits up to say 40% savings in your data center. When you start taking power away from spinning fans, to move air, you, you have to have you know fans that, that are really doing nothing but just to physically move the volume of air across those to cool it. Hundreds of watts of fan power to you know cool many, many more hundreds of watts of things that are inside the servers. But if you start using water, you can actually reduce the amount of power that's needed for all those fans. And in some cases, like we can demonstrate in our Lenovo systems, get rid of fans entirely. That's a savings first and foremost when you look at air versus water. And then you have other tangible benefits like how cool does your data center need to be? Again, our warm water cooling technology allows for up to 45 degrees C water inlet temperature. So really warm water okay. that captures that heat and is really beneficial. When you talk about power at the rack level, you know, we're demonstrating solutions in our HPC um, servers that can support up to 180 kilowatts in <laughs> one rack. That's really okay. a demonstration of what we're talking about and providing solutions using our Neptune water, uh, warm water cooling technology to extract and cool 180 kilowatts in one rack. So um, you know, if you're an, if you're kind of an EV or solar nerd like me, you hear a number like that, and it's it sounds insane. For the viewers at home, let's take 100 kilowatts. That's 130 horsepower. That would be an engine in a car running at redline in that in that rack about the size of a refrigerator. It's insane amounts of power. The other thing is it's 
it's a zero-sum game within the rack, in this, it, meaning there's a finite amount of power that can be dropped into a given rack. If you're saving power by not having to spin fans, that means that you have more power for all the stuff that we really want to do with memory, right? And, and that's exactly where the collaboration comes in, right? If you're all working in a finite zero-sum environment, then how do we distribute the power in the best way possible, right? Uh, what we hear from uh, partners like Lenovo is exactly that, right? Hey, if you guys can consume less memory, then I can use it to run faster, right? So it's a distribution of the budget that we have within the system. And uh, I think we are all focused on, if you can all reduce your budget, what naturally happens is let's put more compute, let's put more memory, right? And get to that, improve the overall performance of the system within that same power budget. And I think we both play a role in being able to deliver to that ask from the industry. So looking towards the future, um, I, I think back to when I was a kid 100 years ago, um, we, we, had, we, had a, we had a computer that, that shipped with 4K of RAM. Yeah. We upgraded it to 16K because we knew that was all we would ever need for anything you could ever do with a computer was 16K of RAM. What, what are the capacities that we're talking about today in terms of these DIMMs uh, in general when we say there is X amount of memory in a 42 U rack of equipment, how much memory are we talking about today? And what does the future look like in terms of speeds and capacities? And what is, what is the future of all of this from a memory perspective look like to you? Sure, the future looks very bright. <laughs> and bright not just because- A heat? <laughs> yeah, not just because of that. Not just with a thermal imager? <laughs> right, it's not that. It definitely looks bright in terms of solving problems. Right? I think from that perspective, I think there are some incredible challenges and incredible innovation going on to solve those challenges. But put some numbers to where you're talking about. Today, a typical single socket system is about 12 channels of memory. Uh, you can get up to 256 gigabytes per slot. Right? So multiply that by 12. If my math is right, that's about three terabytes for a single socket. Right? Dual socket, six terabytes, and just scale that up. So you're talking about tens of terabytes in a rack of memory that you're putting in, right? Um, so in terms of the future beyond just capacity, I think, I, I don't know what the right solutions would be going forward, but I know that one of the focus areas for all of us, including Micron in this industry, is power efficiency. I think that's, in this context of supercompute, we have to be thinking about power efficiency, and I know Patrick alluded to that also, right? I think having a power-centric, power-efficiency-centric memory and compute solution focus is what the future looks like. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. So from a cooling perspective, you brought this warm water in, relatively warm water. You've dissipated heat from the system. Now you have hotter water. What does the future look like when it comes to, now what, do you do, what can you do with that hot water that yeah. might be interesting. There, there's a lot of things that you can do. You can actually use that to maybe, you know, in certain times of the year, use that to heat certain areas of, uh, you know, a data center or other properties around. Use reclaimed water to do other areas to, when you, you know, we only may have like a 10 to 12 degree C rise in that water. So 45 in, you got 55 to 57. You do need to bring that down, but that's not quite a lot, but you can reclaim that in many, many ways and bring back green, you know, not just green data centers, but even things in the community and, you know, the space around the data center. How can you use that heated water and then just bring that down slightly back to 45 degrees C? You don't need to bring it down too much. But then again, that customer centric view, really, I think Praveen said it, every, you know, watt that we can save, we work in partnership with Micron. We're in the labs together and looking at all those things we can save. And if MR DIMMs provide that benefit and the workload to the customer, it's far better to use that than just having a fan spinning. That doesn't actually move the data around itself, but the MR DIMMs are gonna do a great deal. So again, warm water cooling, that reclaimed water, everything comes back to customer benefits and a total cost of ownership that is really valuable. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Well, let me tell you, folks, I did my best to drive a wedge between these two gentlemen and their companies to talk about things differently. But it looks like absolutely everything they're doing is completely integrated. Um, you know, trying to lower power consumption on one hand, dissipating the heat, um, all of it with a customer-centric view. 
It makes a lot of sense. Lenovo and Micron, thank you, gentlemen, for being with us today. For 6.5 on the Road, I'm Dave Nicholson. Stay tuned for more excitement from SC24.